Never a dull moment for the Hashira. Although I guess the upper levels don't eat crows. They're just self-corrected like that. Just another day in the <laughs> demon core. High praise. Ooh, that would be interesting. Right, are we gonna get training? Are we gonna get butterfly training? That would be pretty damn cool. I feel like she would be a great master. She's got a lot of talent, obviously. Doesn't seem to have a lot of wasted space in terms of her goal. She knows what she's doing. She seems very confident, very self-assured. I feel like there's a lot Tanjiro could get out of being in her company. But let's see. Episode 24, Rehabilitation Training. Here we go. Yes, we do. <laughs> Welcome to Zenitsu. But it tastes good? I'm worried about Inusuke, he's sort of just lying there. Hey, it's Murata! I definitely knew his name before Tanjiro said it. <laughs> what a thing to reflect on that cheerfully. Yeah, I almost got melted away, but everything's fine now, because I didn't get melted. We're all concerned. A very astute. Right. Exactly. Yeah, we had different stories. You had the A arc, or the B arc, we had the A arc. Man, is he gonna have to explain this to everyone from now on? Inusuke. <laughs> Inusuke, no! Fight! Fight to live! This is a glaring, <laughs> glaring hole in this whole Demon Slayer corporate structure. They're like not learning from mistakes. They're just sending these poor kids into what is inevitable slaughter and then are like, what went wrong? <laughs> How could this, what? We sent these weaklings to fight these creatures we can barely defeat? And they died? Puny weaklings number 1 through 49 couldn't defeat giant jacked spider god? Surprise Pikachu face, etc. I bet they were shocked when they heard about Tanjiro. He's the boy who lived. Maybe that's the strategy. It's like, we gotta kill these 12 Kazuki, but first we gotta locate them. Well, how do you locate the 12 Kazuki? Follow the death of your underlings. It'll lead you right to them. There's something super terrifying about her, even when she's being so friendly. I'm so thrilled to see what this... Training is. Two weeks later, oh, just skipped it. You just skipped over Zenitsu again. Once again, he gets the B scenario. Right. Yeah, I get it. Uh, I knew it. There's something inhuman about her. She's goddess-like, you know? Equal parts terrifying and warm. I want to see it. What are they going through? What's the training? It's no surprise though that it, it's brutal. That she would put them through hell. She wouldn't have problems pushing them to near death every day. Zenitsu. I don't know how he's gonna. I don't know how he's gonna survive this. What are they even doing? Tea ceremonies. So far, so good. <laughs> It's a very specific exercise. Oh, fast. <laughs> I kind of like this. What's wrong with this? This, is, this all sounds great. You get massages, you get beverages, and you get to play tag. Why are they all upset? Oh, this is a long time coming. Oh, this! <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I'm kind of with Zenitsu on this one. All girls have... okay. I mean... It's so good to see life in Inusuke, at least. It's true, he did do that. He did step on a female child. I feel like in the question of who would get more girls, Inusuke or Zenitsu, 
The answer is Tanjiro, but Tanjiro doesn't care. Zenitsu will eventually win once he realizes how to turn off his tears, but Tanjiro is going to get the girl of his dreams. He's going to get someone of real quality, partly because he has absolutely no reason to settle. He's got no baggage in that way. He's just oriented towards being great in his goal and his family. It could also go the Goku Uchichi route where someone just overpowers him. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he doesn't care if he gets splashed in the face. <laughs> the guy's motivated. I'm curious what the parallel will be for this, this juice game. This is all going to have a real-life counterpart, right? Is it going to be poison or something? Why? They quit? He's lost in thought. There's a challenge in front of him. It's a giant boulder that he can't cut in half yet. Ooh, we have a new plateau. Yeah, it's terrifying. Ooh, it's so horrifying to like learn that the things you, you think you do well are just you scratching the surface. That's the edge. They're more focused than he is. Round the clock dedication. It's not a burst. It's not an activity. It's like how they live and breathe, literally. Full dedication. Round the clock. That's tough, man. It's giving me anxiety just thinking about it. <laughs> Not Tanjiro. You do sleep, man. How do you do that? Total focus, total concentration. I feel like the Endeavor philosophy would go a long way here. It's like you just do it incrementally. This is where I would get messed up as Tanjiro. As someone who's impatient by nature. I would be so frustrated by this. I would go for full day, 24 hour, in my sleep, full breathing concentration, and I would make a lot of progress in a really short time, but be frustrated by the fact that I couldn't do it all at once and not get the feedback loop of success and quit. I feel like for a lot of these big things, you have to sort of disassociate somewhat from the, the outcome and it has to be more about the process or you have to fully understand that the outcome is linked to a gradual process. There are so many things I tried to do in huge bursts that I would be way, way more competent in if I had done them in small, dedicated, manageable segments. It's just for whatever reason, as a human being, it's really hard to fully understand the concept of time and how powerful it can be. You know, if time were fully understood, it would change action a whole lot, I think. There are a lot of glorious things that can occur in like one, two, five, ten years that if realized would make all that time and dedication feel so worth it, yet it's so difficult to conceptualize from the onset. And he's comparing himself to the Hashira, but they didn't get it overnight either. They dedicated themselves to it for like, for life. He sounded like Zenitsu right now. There you go. There you go. Get your head on straight. It's electric. <laughs> These girls are giving him the edge. Ooh, that's cool. Pure focus and practice and training. No wonder he can't beat her. She's been chipping away at her, her skill gradually. You didn't realize the scale of it, the scope of it. Same expression no matter what. Her clothes could be at a fire and she'd still have that weird smile. But are you breathing, Tanjiro? Are you really breathing? There's a great metaphor there as well, just for just generally doing things to become better or stronger or whatever. I think the point at which things are really useful or valuable are when they are so ingrained they become automatic. You know, you only have so many resources to devote to behavior or like thought or action. You nail something down so concretely that it just becomes who you are. That frees up that energy for whatever the next thing is, whatever the next point of improvement is. It's like in sports when you practice, you practice the fundamentals so that 
when you actually play a game. You don't have to spend any mental resources on the components of movement or whatever. It's all just going to be strategy and things that are sort of higher level and adaptive and creative than the technical aspects. But I think the same is true for less tangible things, even personality traits. Like even things as subtle as emotions that come up can be trained, although that's harder. I think the first step is just recognizing that there's a choice and then training oneself to observe emotions arising as sort of like an observer. You know, I think that's sort of the, the basic principle of meditation. You practice watching an emotion come up and letting it go or not diving deeper into it enough times, it sort of becomes easier to separate. Or you practice acting contrary to your emotional state that also has a way of facilitating more control and sort of creating an extra layer of space that gives one more more power of like deliberate action. That's something that's not talked about a lot, but I feel is really useful and important. You know, I think increasingly one of the messages I hear or see more often is like, this thing made me feel this way, or like, this is the only possible reaction I could have had. You know, like I had no choice, etc. I see a lot of interesting things being justified that way. I don't think they would hold that against you. He's become his own master. He's really focused. Oh, you just snuck up on me. I got really close. This is me noticing you. Yeah. Wasn't until you showed up to train you, but also to watch you in case I have to kill you with poison. Oh? What is your dream, I wonder? Oh? That is a huge shock, to be honest. <laughs> Smells like honesty. Or not. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, that comes across really well. There's like a weird, bizarre dual channel running with her. Very interesting. Again, I think this is potentially what Tanjiro has to offer and I think is the reason why he's the protagonist and why while he's behind the Hashira, in many ways he's ahead of the Hashira in that he doesn't have that, or he doesn't have that anger or those hang-ups. He has a perspective that allows him to come into this world, excel at this world, but also take the world to its much needed next iteration. <laughs> It's hard to imagine that not being the case for people in that line of work. Yeah, she said it's her dream. Sounds like it's something she wants to become herself. So she's wearing her sister's smile. That's horribly morbid. Yeah, it's a lot of cognitive dissonance to be carrying all this time. There's a lot of contempt in there. Yeah, it's, it feels like she thinks she can't do it. She can't be the one to do it. She can't let go of the hatred in her own heart. I can't help but wonder if there isn't something that Tanjiro is running from, though, in a way. Turning Nezuko back to human form is something that he has been using to give him strength and keep, keep him forward in this vision. Did he ever properly grieve? Does he need to? Getting Nezuko's human form back won't undo the terrible trauma and damage he's experienced. Well, that definitely wasn't the training episode I was expecting, but once again, it sort of stands out from other shows as being unique. And also, once again, the, the mentor is sort of not really that involved. It's sort of like train yourself, which Tanjiro does really well at this point. And Zenitsu and Shinosuke do not do as well. But this time, instead of an impossible boulder representing sort of this impossible task and this taking on a new life far outside of his conception, and I guess also the protective wills of those who wanted to sort of keep him in safety and his destiny and will to surpass that. This time we have human challenges that represent things that Tanjiro has yet to learn, a rounding out of his personality and focus almost like a journey into adulthood. You know what I mean? Going from the state of amazing talent and just raw potential 
and innocence to something chosen and conscious and directed, learning that from people who have walked the path before him and who force him to develop a more patient, gradual strategy. Not that he hasn't always been patient, but I do feel like these individual exercises will have a real life counterpart. Like what is up with the, the tea game? Very strange. And then capping off the episode with an interesting conversation that sort of shows what I think we already know, which is that Tanjiro is behind while simultaneously way ahead. Because speaking of, you know, patience and working on a path, I think getting the fundamentals laid out really concretely makes the rest go a lot faster and smoother. And Tanjiro definitely has a lot of really, really difficult basics of personality just hammered down from the beginning.